you know, this is a story that I was not always courageous enough to tell. Uh, this story, and telling the story, speaks to the evolution of me um, and me understanding that as the seed of Dick Gregory and Lillian Gregory that that is a responsibility that's really, really big. And it's not always one that felt comfortable or safe or popular. But it was one that, honestly, I cannot imagine living without. I don't have a context for not seeing life through the eyes of the movement. Because in the movement, Abundance was not looked at in the context of money. And when I asked my father that day about how he was so generous, and I, I never got it until then. I thought, wow, when you're literally willing to give your life, that's a different level of, of sacrifice and courage. And so I just want to say, you know, Martin and Medgar and Malcolm never got the opportunity to hear their children talk about them. And it was important to me to let him know that I got it. I get it, and I got it. And as a continuum of that legacy, that, that we are this connecting generation, I'm in my 40s, and so I'm not an elder, I'm not youth, and I'm somewhere in that middle, and I'm old enough to understand the significance of sitting at the elders' feet, and I'm young enough to understand the pulse of the youth, because they have intentionally created this gap between the elders and the young people, and we see it with the movement right now. And so it is important for us to tell our story. Not just because we have a famous father. It is important for us to tell our stories because these are the stories that make sense of our journey. These are the stories that let us understand the gifts that we really have. And when reality TV can take over your child's psyche, we know that something is wrong. So it is, it is, this, this moment is to say, everybody in this room, tell your stories. Tell your stories. Because it's time to turn off the TV and you be the movie. I'm going to let my daddy take it. Let me say thank you very much. And I'm happy that you all came out tonight. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Some of them say, come on, I'm going to show you something. And I heard it for the first time that you heard and I thought that God and Martin and Mecca, all in black women, could be alive and hear people talk about the real world. Not about Bo Connor, not about the dogs, not going to jail, not who they kill. This movement started out just like you. Martin had no idea this is where he was going. Martin was not prepared for this. Martin was a Republican. His mother and father was conservative Republicans. His grandfather and grandmother was close to being right wing. I say that to say what the world is listening and listening to, he didn't learn that at home. Huh? He started off making the same mistake that many of us have made. And all the marching and all the people dying, there's one thing that is too late for you to do, but you'll never make it. Because we're the only people, black Americans, on this planet that went through what we went through and opt for education over liberation. 